I begin this post by highlighting that I was one of the few very fortunate people to have been given a strong transplant, which I hope lasts me years to come. However, not everyone has that opportunity, and I live with a tiny touch of uncertainty as to how long my new one will last. So, I'm dedicating this post to BBC Lifeline Appeal, having chosen Kidney Research UK as their, trans as their July charity. They will be focusing on a new, revolutionary technique for kidney transplant treatment, and will be airing at the end of July. Transplants can mean the world of difference to a patient's life. I include myself on that. So please take a moment to read, to read the post that I've written or to listen to this vlog. Remember, if it wasn't for Kidney Research UK putting in time and effort to raise money and fund research, kidney treatment wouldn't be where it is today. And I'm very aware that I was, damn, one of the lucky ones who benefited from that research. So a bit of background from Kidney Research UK themselves. Broadcaster um, Lauren Laverne features in the appeal as, as kidney disease and kidney research are subjects she cares about deeply after her father suffered kidney failure last year. The film features 10-year-old Matthew, who has had both his kidneys removed. His life depends completely on daily routine of dialysis. He's been on the transplant list for seven years and is desperate for a donor kidney to become available. Matthew's mum set up a Facebook page with the aim of raising awareness of, the ki of, the, of kidney disease and the organ donor register to try and find a donor for her son. The appeal also features Deborah Bakewell, featured in some of Kidney Research UK's campaigns previously. Deborah went into kidney failure in her 50s. After years of punishing dialysis routine, her wishes appeared to come true when a donor kidney came for a transplant. However, disappointment followed when the kidney appeared to be damaged. Fortunately, her surgeon, Professor Mike Nicholson, was leading a groundbreaking research team funded by Kidney Research UK. Um, I realise I said that weirdly. Was leading a groundbreaking research team funded by Kidney Research UK. <clears throat> he wanted to see if the one in five donated kidneys that were currently thought to be unsuitable due to damage could be successfully transplanted. He has pioneered a technique called, bear with me, normothermic perfusion. I'm really sorry if I said that wrong, I will try and add the actual word into the video so you can see what it looks like. <laughs> Which allowed medics to revive a donor kidney in the lab and test whether it works or not. Deborah decided to become a medical guinea pig and to take Professor Nicholson's offer. After he transplanted the kidney, her recovery was immediate and dramatic, and she says she owes her life to Professor Nicholson's research. Uh, we are now funding a trial to test the technique on many more transplant patients. The appeal is broadcast on Sunday 26th July, BBC One, at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And also Wednesday 29th July, BBC Two, at midday. Uh, there is also a link which I will make available on this blog. It's on the post, but I'll make it available here. So. Help the charity by getting the word out using social media. Kidney Research UK wants as many people as possible talking about this on social media and would love it if you could help us out with that. Use your channels, use your blogs, use your videos, anything. The hashtags to use are hashtag BBC Lifeline and hashtag Every Kidney Counts. Those are two separate ones. BBC Lifeline, Every Kidney Counts. Money raised will go towards the Making Every Kidney Count appeal. Um, I will try and put up links on the vlog so that they're accessible. They are also, however, on the blog itself, once again. However, sometimes kidney transplants don't last forever. But now, there's a chance. Thanks to money raised by the charity, £55,000 has now been put towards a three-year study to combat transplant rejection. A quote from the um, article. One of the ways the body rejects the kidney is to produce antibodies, proteins that stick to the transplant and flag it up to immune cells as something that needs to be attacked. Currently, we use lots of strong medication to dampen down the immune system and prevent this attack. However, these medications have side effects, including increasing the risk of infection and cancer. Here I'd like to point out I'm currently on um, Adiport, which is the immunosuppressant basically for the rest of my life, and I'm taking... Uh, five milligrams in the morning and four milligrams in the evening. That's adjusted depending on the level of my immune of my immune system. Um, 
I'm hoping at some point in the future it'll lessen, but for now it's quite high and I'm basically taking that until there's a medical change, until I could potentially even grow my own kidney back or something using medical research, or something happens, but I'm basically taking that for the rest of my life. Um, continuing with the quote, I'd like to find out what is different between a patient whose immune system starts to attack the transplant and one whose immune system is controlled by the medication. So my research aims to take a few, a few steps back from the point where antib antibodies are produced to try and pinpoint an earlier part of the process where the change begins. I will be looking at the, the way patients' white blood cells or immune cells interact with each other, particularly those that are important for producing antibodies. By looking at these cells in more detail, I hope we can discover new ways of preventing this interaction and find new ways of predicting in advance who is at risk of attack, therefore lessening the chance of rejection, therefore lessening the chance of somebody returning to hospital, therefore reducing the number of transplants and the like, which would be amazing. I mean, the amount of people who donate kidneys at the moment, it, it's good, but it, it could potentially be higher. So it's a case of there is research going there is research going into how current situations can be changed to prevent further transplants in the future and the like and basically extend patients' lives and the organ's life. It's this is a subject which is very, very strong to my heart because having been at the forefront as being a kidney patient, I know how difficult it can be living with a failing kidney. And I know there are others out there who have dealt with far worse. I mean, I was lucky to miss dialysis, but there are some out there who I know are struggling with, with much worse and the like. So I just ask that, every pe first of all, every penny counts. But the main thing is to get awareness out there. I mean, I've spoken to people casually in the streets when I've gone around as a um, kidney research um, community person. And some of them didn't even know Kidney Research UK existed. Um, so I'm asking that the appeal is considered, people spread the word, just watch the program, uh, get more understanding of it, and see if there are any ways that can be helped or anything. But yeah, now I'm starting to go off script and blather a little bit, but as you can tell, this is fairly close to my heart because it is very difficult living with this with the situation. Even post-transplant, I'm still going through some, something. So yeah, <laughs> spread the word however you can. The research, uh, the charity would be extremely grateful for it. Thank you.